with the the heavy heavy metal and the, and the and the weird sound effects and stuff like that. How how close of sound effects did you use? Did you use a fuzz tone? Fuzz tone, yeah. A yeah, wow wow pedal. No, yes. It, it, we we got one of the first fuzz tones that ever came out. Jim had it, and it was very crude. I actually but, bought uh, it from Mike. Oh, from Mike. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, the funny story about that was that uh, it was in 1966, and we were recording that uh, song that uh, seemed to become a collector's item in Europe and everywhere else. Is sacrifice that got us back into this. Uh, uh, sort of our people were noticing what the band's name was or something over the last 40 years. We're in Harmony Studios. We're going to cut this. First of all, we, what we wanted to do was I Want to Tell You was the A-side with a three or four piece harmony. It was beautiful. It was stair-step and everything. It was, it was a good song. All of a sudden, they wanted the B-side. And so we went out, had a few beers. Uh, Kenny Sinner, the keyboard player, wrote out the lyrics on a napkin. And then at that particular point, came back in, we started laying it down, and then Kenny went down, he said, that's not what I want, and we stopped, and he went down to a local pawn shop and bought this, this big old speaker, like a 15 or 17 inch speaker, and he had this little amp, took it apart, put that speaker in there, wired it back up, we started playing, laying down the uh, rhythm track, and all of a sudden, sparks started coming out of the amplifier. And smoke started coming out, and the thing had caught off fire. He had overpowered it. He overpowered that, overpowered the volume, and it just started going. <laughs> and it, the engineer and people ran out of the control room and said, you idiots are going to burn down my studio. Stop. And Kid Sinner goes, now that's the sound, the sound I'm looking for. And that's the sound that they still had the tape going that's on Sacrifice. That's what made that noise. <laughs> so, <laughs> You hear it first right here. I mean, now who who threw the harmonica line down? I was that's the harp boy, guy. Jim. Isn't he a Thank great you. harp guy? Yeah, that was a great harp. Uh, harp and you know, I that. just learned that uh, harmonica. I, I I said, how am I going to learn this harmonica? And then I got a, a book said something about it's a because I I I kept trying to play blues on the same key that you played uh, you played it in. I said this isn't working. There's some kind of secret. There's some kind of secret. And so I read something somewhere that it's called a cross harp, and that you play in the in the what is it, the the uh, the dom the uh, subdominant. Uh, anyway, uh, so I took the harmonica and I put it on my nightstand at home because I live with my parents. And uh, every night before I'd go to sleep, I'd suck on this harmonica and try to learn some words. Well, at the same time, the Beatles were around, and uh, they had come out with uh, "Love Me Do," which is a real simple line. And so I, I thought, well, I can do that, so I should be able to do some of the other stuff. And uh, so that's that's how it all got started. And so when I was I asked these guys, I said, well, you think we could maybe try to mix this harp in here to this song? And it come out real well, especially, the, well, the people at the studio knew what to do with the harp once we put it in there. They just kind of pushed it back up into the reverb and made it kind of wailing sounding, you know. And uh, it, it, they, they did a lot more for it than I did. <laughs> Some guy... I, I was in a uh, book, some rock and roll history book was kind of fascinating, and I, someone sent it to me, and I was laughing, and then uh, this guy that interviewed me in San Francisco did, and another guy of another record label, they asked the same question, and that was about this song, Sacrifice, and they were talking about Jeb and the Wailing Heart, and then they said, have you ever read this about the song, what do you think, and this guy, he's a musicologist, uh, as a P some PhD in something, I don't know what, and he was talking about how we structured the song with a syncopated rhythm and went on like this. I said, the song was written in 10 minutes. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I have no idea what you're talking about here. And then they went out and they started talking about the lyric content of it. And I said, these lyrics, if you listen to the song, they do not make sense. Don't make any sense, yeah. He put them together like a date with Fu Manchu for something that would rhyme. And we started laughing about that. They said, really, there's no hidden meaning behind all of that? I said, nope. You mean, you mean you couldn't play the song backwards and <laughs> hear... You could probably get as much sense out of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, well isn't, that, isn't that kind of a, a summary of rock and roll? It is. It, it is. is. There's a lot of songs like that. Like, uh, again...